Welcome to the Sandbox Training. In this training, we'll create object cause and effect with messages. This is a medium difficulty activity where we'll use behaviors and components to create simple logic systems with objects. This activity will help you learn the basics of communication in the Game Maker using messages to create cause and effect. To get started, launch the Game Maker, open or create an experience, and move to any area with empty space. Let's turn off the grid and focus on logic. Some behaviors and components are only available as MP, which means they are multiplayer synchronized. For this activity, choose MP only when an SP option isn't available. Designing gameplay with SP and MP logic will be explored later. First, let's look at collisions and messages. Behaviors and components are needed to make objects active and or interactive. This logic provides a framework so messages can be sent and received to trigger gameplay events. Tags and broadcast type allow for greater control over how events are triggered. Let's add the following objects to the viewport. Two doors. One door will add the door behavior. On the other, we'll leave no behavior or component. Pressing E next to an object sends the message interact. When we press tab, if we press E to interact with each door, one door is a prop and the other animates open and allows the player to pass through. Most objects must have collisions to prevent players from passing through them. You can control if an object has collisions, is visible, or has gravity in the properties panel. Now, let's take a look at toggling behaviors on or off. A message sent to an object's toggle component can turn its behavior on or off. Think of it as locking or unlocking a behavior. Let's add an object that sends a message. For this, we'll use the Museum Info panel. We'll select it, and we're going to add the button component. The message we want to send will use door unlocked. You can create a custom message by typing it into the message field and then click add. Under broadcast type, we're going to leave everyone in range. Now let's add two objects in range of this yellow sphere. We'll use our two previous doors. The door on the left already has our door behavior. We'll change the message to open the door to also be door.unlocked. We can select an existing message from the dropdown. The door on the right will add a door behavior. We'll leave the message to open, interact. And now we're going to add the toggle component. To turn on the toggle, we'll add the message door.unlocked. We'll be sure to toggle the initial behavior state to false, meaning this behavior is inactive when the game starts. When we press tab, neither door can be opened by using E to interact. If we use the podium to send a message, one door opens, the other's behavior is turned on, and we can now press E to interact with it. Now let's take a look at trigger and filter messages. We're gonna run a few scenarios. For this first one, let's add the following to the viewport. We're going to add a door with these settings, and we're going to add an ancient lever. On the ancient lever, we're going to add a message broadcaster, and the message to send is going to be door a.open with these settings. So that's scenario A. For scenario B, this will be our object collected scenario. We're going to add another door with these settings. And then we're going to add a key with these settings. For our third scenario, we're going to run with a tag detected scenario. So we'll add one more door with these settings. Now we need to add one more key with these settings. So if we look at our three door scenarios, scenario A, we're unable to open the door by interact, but if we hit the lever, we'll open the door. Scenario B, we're unable to interact with the door to open it, but if we collide and pick up the key, 
it will send a message to open the door automatically. And for scenario C, again, we're unable to interact to open the door, but if we pick up the key by pressing E and we bring it into proximity of the speaker on the door, the door will unlock and open for the avatar. There are many more ways to send messages. We'll explore more later. Now, let's build a scene where we use one message to trigger multiple objects. We can build hidden logic into our experiences with invisible and collision-free logic assets. Let's add the following to the viewport. We'll add a logic asset with a trigger volume component and these settings. This means when the avatar enters this yellow box, it will send a message of night. And when they exit this box, it will send the message day. We'll add a car asset and give it a platform behavior with these settings. This means the car will not move until it has the night message. Next, we'll add a weather asset with the message required to turn on being night. We'll add a street light for a prop with no logic required. We'll add a logic light element for a spotlight with these settings. And lastly, we'll add two more logic light elements, also spotlights to take place as the car headlights. So if we hit tab to take a look, we'll notice it's still daylight. Nothing's on, nothing's moving. If the player moves into the volume trigger area, we'll notice everything switches. That one message is sent to all to activate them. However, we'll notice that the headlights are not moving with the car. To fix that, we'll open our hierarchy panel. We'll select both headlights and drag them onto the blue car. Now the two headlights are parented under the blue car. And if we return to play mode and enter the box, we'll notice the headlights now, in fact, do move with the car. Now let's take a look at messages with arguments. Some special messages appear in yellow and allow you to send information, an argument with a message. You can also create custom messages with arguments that will appear yellow in the message dropdown list. These will be explored in a later activity. We'll continue with our previous example so the weather and the streetlight will gradually change. Let's add some new objects to communicate these special messages. We'll add another logic asset to the scene and give it a message broadcast behavior with these settings. Lastly, we'll add one more logic asset to the scene. We'll also give it a message broadcast behavior with these settings. This will control the gradual change of the weather. Now, in order for this to work, we need to modify some existing objects to receive these special messages. If we go back to our logic light asset for the street light, we need to change the message to turn on to light color. For the weather asset, we need to change that message required to be weather fade. If we hit tab and enter the area, we'll notice the weather and the street light gradually change using these special messages. Let's save this experience so the logic is available to use in another activity. This activity introduced new tools and concepts to understand objects more and how to make them communicate in custom ways. In the next activity, you will learn to integrate quests with some of the logic from this activity so you can begin designing a flow for players with clear guidance to play through your experience.